I want to share with you five quick observations in a very short period of time. I'm really glad to be here today. Uh, you represent uh, something that has been in my mind and my heart for a long while, and I feel one of you. First observation, you've acquired, by virtue of this degree, a set of skills and knowledge to do a service, to do a job, and to earn a living. It's really important. When I fly back to Denver this afternoon, I hope that pilot is a competent pilot. I don't care how long he sat in the seat. I care that he has demonstrated his competence to do a job, and that's what you represent. Congratulations. <laughs> the this, this second observation is you didn't do it alone. You are a part of a learning, teaching community. Someone commented that some of you are going to meet your mentor for the first time today, having been online for months. Uh, when I'm buried, you can put on my tombstone, here lies Roy Romer, who cannot remember what he did, but can remember who he did it with. Let me say that the sense of collegiality that you share is tremendously important and uh, value it, continue it. Third observation, you're a part of a movement. This nation needs to find a way to offer education beyond high school at a more reasonable cost, a higher quality, with more access to the people of this country. It is the key to the economic future of this, of this country, but also key to the values that we share as a people. And so you are part of a movement. The third observ fourth observation is competency is not enough. I've been thinking about this since yesterday. Competency is a tremendously driving principle of our mission. But I remember the Inquisition in Spain in the Middle Ages, they were very competent. I remember the Third Reich in Germany, they were very competent. They knew what they needed to do to do their job. So it's wonderful to be competent, but competence is not enough. What we need to add to competence is an understanding of what is true and what is right. Because you need to use your competence for an end that includes truth and right or justice. Now. I've been thinking about this since yesterday. How do you handle in one paragraph the concept of competency and truthfulness? I live in an age in which there is not enough truthfulness. I live in an age in which there's a polarity about how we speak about the truth that is devastating, particularly in political scenes. We need to find what's true continually in our life. And we need to remember that our view of the truth is always partial. It's always partial. We need to look to others who have a different point of view and say, you have a piece of the truth I do not have. I need to respect that. I need to understand it. I need to learn from it. But I still need to decide what is true. Final observation. You're just beginning a search. I'm impressed by the average age, 37. Uh, you're just beginning a, a life of competency. No, no, you've been on one for a while, but you've you got now a certificate that says you're competent. But your profession will change. That pilot I'm going to ride with 20 years from now, he's going to have to have a different set of skills. You are going to have to have a different set of skills. So. The last observation is we're on a continuing search for a, a learning process. And I got to tell you, it's very exciting. I happen to be 83. I have three books in my suitcase that I am reading on this flight. The curiosity of my 21 grandchildren drives me to learn. There's so much to know in this world, so much to do, and so many people to understand and to relate with relate to. So use this opportunity beginning today as a continuing educational search for 
competency, truth, and what's right. Thank you.